This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 318 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by Equestrian Collections. Visit them at equestriancollections.com. Enjoy today's tip. Hi, Glenn the Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Well, we have back with us today Tammy Serrance, who we had on last week, who is the co-host of the Western Radio Show and the world, multiple world championship uh, mounted shooter, one of the most dangerous women in the world on horseback. And she just notified me today, actually, that she qualified to be in the world championships for, for the um, rifle shooting. Uh, so she usually does pistols, but she's now qualified as one of 10, I think, to do the World Championships for rifle shooting. She was very excited about that, and we congratulate her for that. She is quite uh, quite an entrepreneur. She does a lot of different stuff. She has about 12 different jobs in addition to competing internationally as a, as one of the world's best mounted shooters and training horses and everything else she does. Um, you're going to hear some repeats this week of some, not repeats, but, uh, some people that we had on last week. We usually try and spread them out a little bit more, but I'm actually, uh, I, thanks to the world equestrian games and getting a little bit behind on things. We're going to be recording some new tips with people, uh, beginning next week. So we'll be able to start spreading out the, the guests. If you would like to, uh, be part of the horse tip daily show. We'll talk a little bit more about that in tomorrow's show. We would love to be you to be part of it. But right now, we're going to be talking with Tammy Serrance, and she'll have another terrific tip for us. She's an excellent trainer of horses, especially for desensitizing horses, obviously. She has to desensitize them to gunfire. So you can do that, and you can barrel race at the same time, basically what they do. Um, you can pretty much train a horse to, to do almost anything with almost any noise. So she'll be helping us with that. But first, I want to talk to you about question. Equestrian Collections. You know, it's that time of year. It's fall and winter, and it's time at Equestrian Collections to stop by to their website at equestriancollections.com. They have over 20 different brands of blankets and sheets for your horse. No matter where you live in the country, if you live in, or Canada for that matter, if you live in the coldest parts or the warmest parts, they have a sheet or a blanket for you. From the most heavyweight to the lightest, you're going to find them all at equestriancollections.com at a price you can afford. They have terrific prices to it terrific quality terrific service they have customer service that can't be beat. So you're going to want to stop over to equestriancollections.com for all of your fall and winter needs in the way of blankets for your horse, for your pony, or in the way of clothing for you. If you need a new coat, you need new riding breeches, winter breeches, uh, winter boots, uh, you need them for your husband. They, they have a huge uh, quantity of stuff for the horse husbands that ride, which you can't find just anywhere. So stop on over to equestriancollections.com and place your fall or winter order now. Well, we're we're back now with Tammy Serrance. Well, hi, Tammy, and welcome back again to Horse Tip Daily. It's always fun to have you on. I just feel like getting out my gun and, and setting it right here beside me. Not only because you, okay, I'm nervous. That, that's partly, well, it's partly because you scare me to death. So that's partly why. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't. I love you to death. You know that. So, 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 Tammy, we're talking about, uh, we always talk with you because you're a championship uh, competitive shooter and also a competitive trail mm-hmm. rider, which we're going to have to do some tips on here in the future as well. But um, mm-hmm. right now, today, we're sort of continuing our series. Tammy's done a couple of other tips on the desensitization. There, wow. The desensitization <laughs> of horses for, for her sport, which is competitive shooting, which is not something any of us really have tried before there's very few in the world that have done that now there's some people out there who hunt off of horses and and again i i would say it's a relatively small group of those so we've talked last time about the progression and teaching the horse uh how to progress for sound and in in that case for sight with the smoke and the fire that comes out of the gun but you guys also do something else these events are timed and you have to ride a course right a pattern Exactly. There are times event, there's about 55 patterns, and you don't know what you're running that day, but it, it is a timed event. Every target you miss, you have five seconds added onto your time. So yeah, there's a pretty fine line between horsemanship and maximanship, and 
and getting through the quickest you can safely. <laughs> and and we, we should say that you're shooting out 10 balloons on this course, and you're doing it, in your case, because you're a world champion, you're doing it in about 11, 12 seconds, right? There are. There's a lot of patterns, and, and some are as quick as, you know, 9, 10 seconds, and the other ones are a little longer with some more barrel turns and stuff. And we actually, you know, we do have the barrel racing pattern, you know, the, the clover leaf. Yep, uh, that yep. is one of our shooting patterns, and, and we do have balloons in there, and that takes us about 16 seconds. 17. Oh, well, that's, that's, boy, you yeah. guys are sloughing off. Um, so, <laughs> so now you're riding through this thing, 16 seconds, shooting out 10 balloons, but what people don't know is you're actually changing guns halfway through. We do. We shoot the first five targets with one gun, and then we put the gun back, and then we grab the second gun, and then we can clean up the other last five targets. Okay, so, so there's a total of ten targets, and we have two guns. And you're shooting out balloons. So I assume what I assume that you do. This is just a curiosity question that I have. I assume uh-huh. that you are shooting five because you have six shooters, and you're leaving an empty when you start, so you don't shoot yourself in the foot. It's a safety thing. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. that is that is totally correct. Yeah, we don't want the firing pin on a bullet, and uh, and it's actually against the rules. If you put six in your gun, you are in big, big, big trouble. Yeah, you're just, <laughs> Five you're gonna, only in a six You're going to be competing in the next tournament, not this one. Um, so, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So, so tell me, what kind of guns do you use? I use Cimarron firearms. They are a Model P. They are stainless steel because I have a lovely tendency to leave my guns outside. I know, <laughs> which is terrible on me. Good there, Tammy. <laughs> The stainless steel, you know, the black powder is pretty corrosive. So, um, you know, Cimarron makes a great line of guns. Are they lighter, and, too? Uh, they really hold up. You know, see, I can't answer that. I've been shooting for so, so many years. I, my hands and my arms are just used to that. But I do have new students that come out, and they, they complain. I'm like, oh, these guns are so heavy. And I'm like, well, just go faster. Then you don't have to hold it as long. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but yeah, there are some complaints that, that they are a little heavy, but I don't notice it myself. Now you've actually done two. We always get off the. T- uh, I apologize to everybody. We'll get to the tip, but uh, I love talking to Tammy. This just I'm a guy. What do you want? She's talking about shooting. Um, so you actually do rifle shooting too, right? I do. I do. Uh, there's a couple of different calibers we can shoot in cowboy man is shooting. I. Uh, I have to say, I shoot the girly gun. I have a forty-five uh, revolving carbine from well, Cimarron what the Firearms. Hell? Okay, so what the heck is the not girly gun? Know. It's a girly gun. I like it. No, but uh, it's, it's... what's the not girly gun? If a forty-five is a girly gun, what's the not girly gun? Oh well, see, the girly gun is a forty-four forty. Um, okay. Cimarron makes a, a, a single a lever action forty-four forty. See. For people who don't know, the revolving carbine is pretty much a pistol with a stock on it and a long barrel. So it's it's a rifle, but it's you know I, I do get a little bit of flack from shooting a girly rifle. <laughs> there, there's a they're, they're pretty tough on the comparisons on the mass shooting circuit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you have enough titles behind your name to back that up now. Uh-huh. So <laughs> yeah, I beat all the boys with my girly gun. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> When you first, uh, like my girly gun now. <laughs> now let me ask you this: t- We're never going to get through this. I can tell you. Um, so when you first started, were you were you one of very few girls that have, have, had ever done this before? There, there are some girl shooters. You know, the problem I had getting into this sport was I had never picked up a firearm before. So I, I was scared of them. If someone had a firearm, I told them to get it away, put it away. It was dangerous. You know, I mean, from, they took our guns away from us in Australia. You right, know? yeah. <laughs> My experience with firearms is, is zilch. So, and I had to work through that. So, it, you know, people who think, oh, well, I've never shot a gun before, or I guarantee you I would rather take a student who could ride a horse than one who could shoot a gun. I can train someone to shoot a gun. But learning to ride a horse and having a good feel and a good seat, you can, I mean, that's teachable, but, you know, it, it takes a lot longer. Yeah, well, I was going to say that's teachable so. over years, not uh, not months. So, yeah. 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 So, you know, we're, we're t- actually what we're the tip we're going to talk about today is muscle memory, because when you're out there riding that pattern, you have a, shooting the balloons is one thing. But the first job is you've got to ride that horse fast, successfully through a pattern and you got to stay on. And that's you know, that that's that's a whole thing unto itself. So when you're training the horses to do the patterns and to do it at speed, I assume your first practicing a ton, doing it slowly. 
Absolutely. And I never run my horses at home. I have a lot of students come out and they're like, oh, we're going to ten cows since, you know, she's a world champion. Let's go run these horses. Well, what they don't understand, I, I don't run my horses at home. Everything's slow work, so you can learn. The problem is if I go out and, and run a pattern in home in 10 or 11 seconds, there's nothing I can learn from that because everything that I'm doing in those 10 seconds, I'm relying on muscle memory, like you said. I'm relying on my training. So you have to train at a very slow speed in order to understand what you're doing and, and really you know, put it into your memory of what you need to do and where you need to be on that horse. But it's not just for that reason either. These horses, they can't handle running full speed. It's, it's like barrel racing. You wouldn't go and, and run your barrel horse every single day, and, and we don't run our shooting horses. Otherwise, you, you create a lot of bad habits in that horse from just way too much speed work. So how do you start, how do you start with them to get them uh, to get them to the point where, where they can compete successfully? Yeah. Well, when I first get a new horse in, I'm happy to trot patterns. I'll lope patterns. I'll you know, lift up the shoulder around the barrels and really teach him how to run through that pattern correctly because the problem people get into, they think, you know, it's a timed event, let's run him, you know, let's see how fast he'll go. Well, if you don't have the handle on that horse and you don't have the ability to put him where he needs to be and then you put speed into the mix, speed always makes everything worse. You know? right, right. <laughs> a problem that you had going slow is going to be a big problem. And when you start having problems in your pattern, you start blowing out, you know, of your turns. And when you blow out of your turns, well, then you add more steps into your pattern. And for a time to then adding more steps, that you're covering more ground. So what do you want to do? Go faster to cover more ground. And it's an evil, it's an evil cycle, you know. So it's important that you start really slow and let that horse, you know, get learn that pattern, learn that the balloons mean turn, learn that the barrels mean turn. And not just push him constantly through that pattern, because that is not good for his mental well-being at all. <laughs> and I assume you're doing this a ton of times without ever shooting the gun either. You're not practicing both at the same time necessarily on, on your runs. Exactly. You don't want to do that, because every time if you go into the arena and you pull out your gun, your horse will be like, oh, okay, well, let's go, we're going to go. So what you need to do is a lot of slow work. You know, I'll take those horses out to those arena, and I won't shoot off them. I don't want them just to be calm in that arena, put their head down, and go to work. So I'm not going to be shooting off them all the time. When I've got a new horse in in training, what I'll do is, is I'll desensitize him and do my progression of sound work in my round pen, and then I'm going to take him out to the arena you know, on the same workout, and I'm going to trot him through, and I'm going to bend him and flex him and let him just be really smooth through that. So I'm actually doing two things at once. I'm, I'm teaching how to run patterns smoothly and calmly in the arena, and then I'm working on my sound somewhere else in the round pen where it's safe. And then I put the two together, you know, towards the end of my training. And how long will it take for a horse to come from, from you know, a broke horse, a, a, you know, a, an okay rider to, to a yeah. serious competitor in the shooting world? Yeah, it depends on your horse. Um, it, roughly, I would say 30 days. If someone brings really? a horse wow. in that has a handle, yeah, yeah. And going through the sounds, and, and you have some horses that are just really quiet, and they don't mind. And it's really tempting for me just, you know, to rush through this horse and be like, oh, well, he was good on this step, so I'm going to skip that and go the next step. And But that's where you'll get yourself into trouble. You've really got to take the time, you know, on these horses, every single one of them, to do to do the right progression. And now, let, let me follow that up with how long, and I know it depends on the rider, but I assume then it takes longer for the rider to figure, it's not, you're not going to be competitive on, on, a, on a high level in 30 days as a rider. No. That's going to take you years, I assume. It, it, there's dues to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> because when I, when I was going out and competing, there's 55 different patterns, and you have to analyze every single pattern and every turn, and you've got to know when to rate your horse. And that just, that like anything, just comes with a lot of experience and a lot of lessons learned, you know? How many, uh, how long before you actually ride do you know what the pattern is? In the morning, they will post okay. the patterns, they'll print them out, and, and then they post them, and then everyone, they just don't, they don't want to post them the night before, and they're right. randomly drawn. What they do is they take all the numbers from the patterns, and they throw them into a hat, and then they pull them out. So, so you have no, no idea ahead what, of time what's going to be that day. Nope. Yeah, wow. No, no, you, you, there's some patterns that I enjoy more than others. You know? <laughs> so, I'm just going to have to. I always go up in the morning. And, now, are yeah. you competing anymore? Do you still compete? Yes. 
Yep, yep, I'm competing. I am. Uh, I, I still travel all around the country. I'm off to, um, you know, Tennessee, and then I have an, a, a pretty big event coming up in Texas here in a couple of weeks. So, Where are um, you in Tennessee? Yeah, no, I am in, is that Murfreesboro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be at the stadium there. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a fun arena. Cool. Well, we only have to see what, we'll have to chat about that offline here. Um, that's not too, that's only three hours from me. So, um, so oh, really? yeah. So Tammy, tell tell everybody where they can find more out about you. Yeah, I've got a website, Texas shooting horses.com. And there's all my contact information on there. People can send any questions or comments or you know, whatever you need. Just, you know, send me an email and I'll uh, shoot one back. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun. She is a riot. Um, if you if you missed her previous tips on training for for desensitization, you can go back to horsetipdaily.com and search for her under the experts uh, drop down menu on the left side of the page, and you'll find all her tips in a row. You can go back and listen to each one. It's one of the nice things about podcasts. You can go back and listen to past ones all the way back to number one. And we do have people listening all the way back to number one of Horse Tip Daily every week. It's uh, we thank you for that, and we appreciate that. We hope we get a variety in here for you that you enjoy well thank you everybody we'll be back again tomorrow uh, with another new expert and another new horse tip until then stay safe everyone and wear your helmet the horse radio network and the horse radio network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on horse tip daily 